This time we're going to talk about supporting plants. And supporting plants can be classified into two types or two main categories. We have the physiological support and we have the structural support. And such classification depends on the difference of the types of support in plants. The physiological support depends on the physiological state of the cells inside the plant, while the structural support depends on the deposition of certain materials that strengthen the walls of the cells themselves or the whole plant. So, we'll begin with the physiological support. Let's say you leave a seed in open air. After a while, the seed will become wrinkled. Or, if you leave a plant this plant, let's say it's in a field and then the field is not irrigated for a long time or for a while and then the plant will wilt. Why does this happen? This happens because the water will move by the action of osmosis. And in osmosis we know that water moves from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Now, with no water supply given to the plant in order to maintain the uh, ratio for osmosis, there is a higher concentration of water inside the seed or inside the plant. If no enough water is supplied to the plant in order to uh, replace the loss of water, the water will get out and no water will maintain the shape of the seed or the plant because the water that gets inside the seed or the water that gets inside the plant goes into the vacuoles of the cells. The vacuoles of the cells. So if the cell has a shape like this, this is the nucleus, this is the cell wall, and we have vacuoles here. This is the nucleus. When the water gets in the cell, it goes into these vacuoles, it fills them, and the cell expands, maintaining the shape. If these vacuoles are vacant or empty, the cell will collapse and the wrinkling or the wilting of the plant will happen. And if the field is re-irrigated again, we'll see that the plant will re-maintain its old shape. So, this is the physiological support. For the structural support, on the other hand, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, it depends on the uh, deposition of certain materials. For example, like cutein or suberane. These materials are deposited on the cell walls or between the cells and they strengthen the um, ability of the cells to maintain their shape so that they don't collapse easily like we mentioned here. But such materials are deposited on the peripheries of the plant. For example, if this is a cross section of the stem and these are the sides of the stem and of course in the middle we have our vascular bundle that transports water up and down the plant. We will not see such materials here in the middle. We will see them on the peripheries. Why? Because the presence of such materials will prevent the action of osmosis as much as possible. So they cannot be found here because we need osmosis in such areas but when water reaches the periphery, we want to prevent the water loss as much as possible. So they are deposited on the peripheries of the plant. And um, we have cholinchema cells, for example. Cholinchema cells, they contain cutein and sclerenchema cells. They contain suberine. They're also called stone cells due to their rigidity. 
So the physiological support maintains the turgidity of the plant and the structural support maintains the rigidity of the plant. And this is it for today. The next time we are going to talk about the uh, support in humans. So we're going to talk about the skeletal system. So we're going to talk about the main um, bony structures of the human body. So until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.